Oh, hello. Uh, let's talk about CSS layout. By the end of this lesson, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to lay out web pages with document flow and, wait for it, flex. So um, I want us to get a little bit more hands on than we were yesterday. So um, I want to make a recommendation for a, a page on the internet that you think looks pretty good that we can practice with. Okay. It has like really nice looking sites. Okay. CSS. CSS Zen Garden. Um, it has like a bunch of sites on the right as well. Cool. How about we start? Well, mm. actually, to start with, we're going to use this one. Um, this site itself. So uh, your first task is, uh, and you can go to this site yourself, I want you to figure out where the boxes are. That was the thing we were talking about yesterday. You can sketch them in a notebook, um, you, uh, whiteboard slate, some tool, but figure out where the boxes are on this. Go. Give us another minute. What boxes do you see on this screen?
Okay, let's get back together. Let's um, let's start with the header. I get a volunteer to tell me to come up to the screen and point out the different boxes that you see. Yeah, come on down, Captain. This is one, this okay. is one, and then this is one. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much, Kat. <laughs> so I see a couple more. I see all of those, but if you think that this is a box, then this would be a box within that. This would be a box. That would be a box. And then all of this is a box. And then all of this is a box. That is a box. That is a box. And that is a box. And this is a little more debatable whether this is a box or a border. But you see this kind of this thick stroke up at the top? Yeah. That might it's purely decorative, but that might be a box also. Spot shape. It could also be just the top border of that box. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if we can get something that's at least sort of shaped like that on the screen. So first thing we need to do, um, and one of the reasons we teach CSS and HTML together is that they are peas in a pod. Uh, there's really no CSS without elements to a style. So we're going to touch an index.html and app.css. Uh, you do not have to follow along with this. I'd probably recommend just taking notes. But I'm going to say, all right, there's a doc type. It's got a head. It's got a body. It's got a title. Okay, so those boxes, we need to make elements for each of those. So what's a good semantic name for this entire green thing? Header. Header. I like it. We'll say that all of this is going to live inside a header. And now we need to figure out the next two major subdivisions of this. I'm going to say that this side and this side, but we need to decide, are there good semantic names for those, or do we have to go with a generic container? Uh, I'm going to say that's probably an okay case for a generic container. So it's going to have two divs inside of it. And then in the first one, it's got a logo, a title, and like a tagline. I'm going to say that it's got a logo. And then this is, this is kind of an interesting thing. So I'll say, what is that? CSS Zen Garden. If I put the tagline down here, the beauty of CSS design. Right now, 
those three things kind of make that shape. That's hard to do if they're all siblings. So uh, we go, all right, well, how do we keep this semantic so that we're not just making elements that match how we want something to look? And the truth is these things actually have a semantic relationship that's sort of separate from this. How would you describe, think to yourself for a sec, how would you describe what these two things are as a unit distinct from that? Think to yourself. Volunteer. Yeah. I think in the CSS it's called a header group. Sure. Um, I feel like there's there's something that could tie into the fact that it's like the name and the tagline. I'm, I'm not like, I don't have an answer in mind that I'm fishing for. Um, but I feel like there is something there. Anybody have another idea? Yeah, Kat. Title and subtitle. Title and subtitle. Yeah, I kind of like title group better for that. Um, so now I have to think, is there a semantic tag for that? And yeah, I think there is. Uh, let's say section. Yeah. All right, let me go with div again. But we'll call that a title group. And then we can call this one a subtitle. OK? So elements-wise. I got the stuff that I think I need there. And then inside this second div, hmm, curious. I've got these two boxes here. What's the right element for that? There's two you could use. Really only one that I think is right, although I'd probably take either one. Yeah. Can you use aside? Ooh, so an aside is probably what I've described this as. Can you have an aside in a header? If you could, I would probably put that here. Oops, not there. Here. But I don't think it is. I think it is on the bottom one. I don't think it is on the top. Because if we look at the MDN definition of an aside, portion of a document whose content is only indirectly related to the document's main content. Frequently presented as sidebars or callout boxes. And then maybe, maybe a side isn't even all that good for this. Visually, it is on the side, but this is a collection of links. That sort of makes me think that should maybe be a nav. Okay, back to this top one. What was it? Menu. Menu, interesting. So menu is, a, is like a good call, I think. But the MDN definition of menu is kind of specific. Group of commands that a user can perform or activate. So not a navigation menu, like an action menu. Um, context menus, like when you right click on something. Something like that would use that element. It's a good guess. If you were just to describe these two things in words, like not tech words, what would you call them? Buttons. Buttons. So uh, button is a eh, kind of borderline appropriate thing to use for this. However, what it really is is a link. So I'm kind of inclined to call both of those 
anchor tags. So let's see, view all designs and a carrot. Okay, so at this point, I kind of want to see what we have. Neat. Now here's the kind of interesting thing about this. This isn't unusable. It's unstyled, but this is kind of like a good smell on whether or not you used good semantic HTML. If your entire thing falls apart when it's unstyled, you probably didn't semantically style it very well. If you can turn off the style sheet and still use the site, that's a good sign. Okay, so we've got some content here. Now, we need to figure out how to lay this out. And so, let's do this. For just this thing right here, inside of this big box, I want you to think about how you would approach styling that. You can write actual code, you can write notes on like the kind of approach you would take, but how would you get this thing on the side adjacent to these, these two things, this on top of this, and this is like kind of vertically centered and offset from that side. Go. What kinds of things would you need to do? Write them down.
All right, now I'd like you to talk in twosies and threesies. So this table, two, two, three, uh, two, and three. Talk about <coughs> what opportunities and challenges you see with trying to get this to look like this. Go. Let's figure out how we're going to approach this. First thing that I want to do is just get these side by side. So, hmm, I think we have two. Well, how do I get those side by side? This the this great big box and this smaller, slightly smaller box. How do I do that? Inline block, okay. And to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna put a uh, background on that entire header so we can see what part the header actually is. So I'll say, okay, you have a background color, RGB 0, 120. So I'll make that green, half saturation, half light. Okay, and then header has two direct children. So I can think of two different ways we do this, but I'm going to start by flexing them. So I'm going to say that those children are flexed and they're going to be justified as space between. So push them out to the edges. OK. Cool. So now they're split up. I also want to get rid of this doopy uh, border that's all around this. Now, I didn't put that in. Why is it doing that? Who knows? It's native to the browser. Yeah. Your browser has a style sheet that it applies to 
every page you go to. It's what makes H1s big. It's what makes them come in from the sides, even if you don't do any styling, is your browser does some of that itself. And so one of the first things that I'll do when I'm styling something is reset those. And there's a really popular CSS reset called the Meyer reset. And it just takes out all the default browser styles. And so one way to do this is just to paste that in and then then everything looks the same. H1s aren't any bigger. You don't get those things on the side. Uh, we have to style everything. What is it called again? The Meyer reset. And just in general, these things are called CSS resets. All right, so yeah, all right, all right. So first thing that we need to figure out, I'm sorry, yeah. Can you go back and show me where you pulled uh, page reset? I just pasted it at the top of the file. Cool, so we have this now, and we're trying to make it look like that. First thing, sort of feel like we need the height. So that's probably about 300 pixels maybe. So what happens if we just give the header a height of 300 pixels? That's too much. Try 200. A little bit less. 160. It's in the ballpark. 150. All right, I'll take that. So first challenge is these things are vertically centered. This box is vertically centered inside this box. What's a good tool for handling that? Margin. So we can do that. And in this case, that actually sort of works. Because if we're fixing the size of that, we can say that all of this collectively is has a margin of this and a margin of this. And that'll push it in the center. I can think of a more durable way. Because check this out. If I do that. Ooh, interesting. So I'm trying to treat all of these as one unit inside of this. I'm trying to treat all of this as a box within that box, which means I need an element that groups them all together. This is the big box. I need another one inside of it. Good gravy. I'm going to pull out the section tag for that, I think. OK, cool. So that section tag, um, I'm going to call this div maybe brand identity. It's got that section in it. I'll flip those. I'm going to make that a section. And this a div. Does it matter if you get sections and headings? Nope. Really, like a section is supposed to be something that has a heading. That's the thing that makes it different than just a div. I don't exactly love my choice here either. But this is part of what you wrestle with when you're choosing. Uh, semantic elements. Good question. Okay, so now I have this box that I'm trying to vertically center. So I can go over to target that one, that brand identity. Oops. Identity. And Kat's idea was uh, to take the div inside of that and give it 
uh, like margin top, let's say we do 50 pixels on top, 50 pixels on bottom, and that should jam it in the center. Cool, not bad. The uh, problem is, okay, I uh, changed the style, so the height of this is actually 250 now. Womp, womp, not centered anymore. The thing I'm trying to do visually is center it within the header. So it's a lot more durable to have a style that specifically does that. So then I can kind of fearlessly start changing styles without going like, oh no, I broke my Legos. So how else can I do that? Yeah, so uh, justify content and line items is part of Flexbox. So that means I need to flex brand identity. And if I align items, which is the cross axis, to center, cool. Now it's centered, and now I can bring that height back to 150, and it's still centered. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, neat. Now, this is like offset from the side by a substantial amount. How do we handle that? Margin. Or, what else could it be? Nope. Padding. Margin and padding. Choose When you choose one over the other, that's another thing you have to wrestle with as a designer. So, what's the difference between margin and padding? I'll tell you, they do the same thing. <laughs> the padding is within the element, margin is outside the element. Indeed. How do you know whether something's inside or outside the element? Those of you who've been reading about the box model, what's in between margin and padding? The border. The border. So if there were a border around these things, where would they go? Um, what I'm thinking, if this is my box, that's probably where the border would go. So that box obviously doesn't have any margin. This box might have margin. Uh, so you put some margin there, maybe some margin there, maybe just margin here to knock it off the edge. So this is the thing and it's offset by this much. Now, the critical question and the reason that I think that this is padding and not margin is instead of this box having some margin to offset it from there, I think it's this box having padding that pushes the content over. And the reason I think that is that um, there is no content that would be in this header that would go here, 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 here. So I'm saying this great big box, it has padding that's gonna push any content that could hypothetically be in it in from the sides. That probably makes it padding. So if I give that header a padding left of 100 pixels, what's that do? Cool. That's probably how I'd approach that. All right, next challenge on this. Getting it to go boop, boop. Somebody who hasn't uh, spoken yet, give me some ideas for how I can approach that. Yeah, Ben. Cool. So these two are grouped together right now, um, and I can use flex, uh, flex start to kind of push them all over to the side. I like that. Uh, so let's take a look at the HTML again. So we're going to flex inside of this container and try to get both of these things as far to the left as we can. 
like these two elements. And then within this one, we're going to try to do on top of each other. Interesting. So why doesn't it do that by default? What part of this makes it so that we have to, or we should maybe flex that? Yeah, Danica. Yep. So. Yep. So is uh, P. I'm talking about the. Uh, it's it's the same thing though. Yeah. Image and div. Exactly. We want them side by side, but one of them is a block element, so it's trying to take up the entire screen. So I can probably even just do dot title group. Um, if I make that div inline, images are inline by default. Do it. Title group inline, and then make the image display inline. Interesting. See what happens if I actually give that a uh, uh, an image. That shouldn't make a difference, but CSS Zen Garden. I'm gonna pinch their logo. Go. Oh shit, does that like have the white background on it? Kind of looks like it does. Yeah, of course it does. So, pro tip next time you're trying to do that, um, there's this uh, tools, and you can look for color transparent. And it'll give you ones with transparent backgrounds. Um, yeah, vectors. Let's see, logo. No, nope, not that one either. What was that? Right, but some of these are PNGs and they don't have them. Fuck, how about this? Logo, give me anything. There we go. There we go. You can tell because it's got the little checkerboards behind it. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to give that a class so I can target it. I'll say this logo should have a width of 100 pixels. Um, if you have to change the, um, the size of something, Start with just the width. Start doing the width and the height. You start fucking up the aspect ratio and smushing it. Um, and width actually has, it's not equivalent to height. It has a, a couple other different magic elements to it in CSS. So if you have to use one, use width. Um, all right. Now, I want to make these side by side. So how about I say that brand identity div I can target that div specifically and say that I want to flex it. Okay, and now I want to say that the flex direction, or if you want a really cool shorthand, flex flow is row, no wrap. So that's the direction and whether or not you want it to wrap. It's still not working. Thank you.
That'll do it. It's weird, man. It's like if I call somebody and I get one phone number and the phone number wrong, I end up talking to a completely different person. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, cool. Getting somewhere. So, mm, what's not right about this, though? Yeah, we got some size differences between these. Well, let's start there. But actually, first, size is very dependent on typeface. So let's get some typefaces that don't suck in here. Um, we need two. These are two different kinds of typeface. Anybody identify the family of this one and this one? This is sans serif. Serif. Very nice. What's, what's a serif? Yeah, I like Sam because it's these little feet. Um, there, there. Uh, that's technically not a serif. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is. Those little feet, those are called serifs. Um, so if I go over to. Yep, there you go. This means it doesn't, ain't, ain't got no serifs. So I want, I want a sans serif that'll work for that. And that is, how about open sans? I'm going to take open sans. And then I need a serif font. So I'm going to get, it's kind of got that like super booky. And it's, uh, it's an italicized. Italicized isn't something you do to a typeface. It is a separate font. Um, they draw the glyphs differently. So um, we need something that has one for one and has those like super ornate. So I want to filter by lots of styles. That's a trick I learned like last night. There we go, Garamond. Um, this was the typeface they used in the Harry Potter books. Pro tip. All right, medium italic. Yeah, that looks about right. So I'm going to take that one. I have two font families, and I want regular Garamond and regular italic. Oops, sorry, regular open sans and regular italic for Garamond. Perfect. And then I'm going to embed those. And my H1 is going to be open sans. Font family. What's, a, what's the difference between a typeface and a font? Who knows? Cat does. What is a cat? The style and the, so the style is like uh, regular or italic. There's two other things. The size and the weight. Size, weight, style. So six, uh, 16 pixel, 400 weight, italic, Arial is a font. Arial is a typeface. Or font family, same thing. Okay, so the H1 is going to be open sans, and then um, any P inside the header okay. is going to be uh, called it Garamond. What was it? 
E.B. Garamond. And font style is italic. Cool. That do. I feel like no, oh, that one didn't take. P tag inside the header. I can actually can just target it with subtitle. That's probably better. There we go. All right. So, all right. Now we need to look at the size a little bit. So I think we need to knock up the size on that H1. So font size. How about two rems? It's like a little bit too big. Like 1.75. Okay. I'll take that. And all right. A couple other things. Now I got the size fixed, but there's something else that looks kind of fucked up. Spacing. How so? Uh, the space between layers and also they're kind of floating out in space. Yeah, they're kind of like tilted a little bit. And the space between these two. A space between working lines. Yeah, like that's got some breathing room. That's what my son would call a finger space. Um, and that doesn't. So that is a good use case for margin. I want this to push other things away from it. There's no world in which I want something that close to it. Part of its nature as a header is I want to push things down. So I'm going to say this has a margin bottom of half a rem. And that looks a lot better. OK, still. Uh, even with all those things, I kind of don't like how this like eh, kind of has that angle to it. How do I fix that? It looks uh, what does? The image. the image. All right, let's make the image bigger. Even though we're concerned about the height, change the width. OK. Problem got worse, although I do like the size better. What else can we do? I think Danica knows. What is it? Uh, you can flex this to be a line. Exactly. If I flex these two things, I can vertically center both of them. That's exactly what I would do. So that's that div under brand identity. Cool. So I've got the flex flow going there. I want to align items center. Nice. Uh, while we're at it, say I want to do that thick green border on top. So that's going to be in the entire header. Do border top. And this goes width, style, color. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. I think the width is the most important. Five picks, solid. And then I'm going to do the exact, this is the kind of color math I like doing with HSL. Same hue, same saturation, darker. Nice. Cool. And that's like a pretty reasonable facsimile of what that side of that looks like. So the the reason that this is like a little bit more offset, why? This is actually a problem we run into in CSS all the time. Why is this space probably bigger than we want it to be? Um, the image already had it in it. Image already has that shit in there. So uh, if we're in a position where we can't fix the image, which would be the easiest way to do it, but we do still want to control this, I'm going to teach you your first CSS hack. Um, use with care, um, but 
this is kind of a neat trick. So that um, subtitle, title group. Say title group, margin left. But Kyle, margin pushes something out. I don't want to do that. Negative 20 pixels. You can do negative margins and scooch them closer together. There we go. And that looks a little bit more like what the actual thing was. And what happens if they overlap with each other? You can absolutely do that. So rule of thumb, any time you do that, uh, leave a comment. I'm not a code comments guy. I think they're a sign of like sloppy variable naming most of the time, unless you're doing a hack. If you're doing a hack, explain why you did the hack. Uh, logo image already has uh, padding. You will thank yourself and the next person who looks at this and goes, why the fuck did you use a negative margin? Cool. Um, now let's take a look. Uh, so now I want you to think about with all the things that we've done so far, how are we going to approach this other side here and make it look like that? By yourself, a couple minutes. Go. The background color on this one slightly different, slightly darker. We've got these things that I put in as anchor tags, but they look like buttons. Hmm. Got the ver vertically centering thing. We've got some spacing in from the sides to consider. Hmm. You can actually see the background through the button. Cool. We're running a little bit low on time, but uh, I do want some feedback on what were your ideas for how we accomplish this? Yeah. You can use the um, display block. Yep. Absolutely. Um, what else? There's some other tricks I'm going to use to make it look kind of like that. Duplex the part of it, the view all design to the middle. Yep. Um, and actually, we don't even need to do that. We can really use text alignment on that because it's within an element that has text. 
And so we can uh, just use text alignment, same way you would like a word processor, without having to uh, flex it. Good call though, I like your idea. What else? Ben? Do you have to no, and that's one of the reasons we didn't use the button element is because this isn't doing an action. It's not changing a thing on the page. It's navigating somewhere else. But if what that was doing was toggling that thing in and out, if it was making something appear, if it was making something go away, that's probably a button, not a link. Other ideas for how I make something kind of look like that. What about the transparency? Yeah, go. Yes. What's the alpha? Haven't heard that word yet. Huh? Yes. Uh, it's designer speak for transparency. How much of it does it have? So, um, we can, ironically can't do that with hex, but we can do it with uh, HSL. All right, so I'm going to give this a class of. Um, let's see, I, I don't want to say something like nav button because that implies how it looks. Keep that stuff out of your HTML. So I want to say something like um, offsite navigation, maybe something like that. I want to describe what it is, not what I think it should look like right now. Because that gets real awkward as soon as you start um, as soon as you rebrand the site, you change all the stuff, and you have these class names that reference how the design used to look. Yikes. Does this get retrained for offsite navigation? Uh, oops. Good call. Okay, so then I can say things that are, are offsite navigation. I want those to look like, I, I want them to be in line because they're right next to each other, but I still want them to have padding and margin and those kinds of things. So there's a special tool for that called inline block. It functions like an inline element. It doesn't try to take up the entire row, but otherwise we get to treat it like a block element by giving it padding and borders and margin. Because like things with emphasis or strong, those don't have that. Anchor tags don't have that by default. But I can give this a little bit of padding now. I can give it a background color. And what I can do is say HSL A for alpha. And I'm going to use the same color that I was using before. Indeed, 120, 50, 120, 50%. And then I want this, to, this looks like it was a lot lighter. So I'm going to go the other direction, lighter. And then alpha is between 0 and 1. So if I make it half, cool. Now it's sort of see-through. So I'm going to make that um, header have a background image in a sec. but. That will kind of show through a little bit. Nice. So since it's going to have that kind of like button-like characteristic, one of the things that I want to do is I don't need the underline and the color anymore. So I'm going to say any anchor tags in, uh, inside of offsite navigation. Well, nope, that is the anchor. Oh, it's not inside of it. I also want to do uh, text decoration, that's the underline, none. Okay, that gets rid of the underline. And I want the color of the link to be 
whatever we're using outside of it. I want you to just inherit it. And cool, now we have regular looking text. And, ooh, interesting though. See how it's all caps? That's a visual thing. The semantic content isn't capitalized. It just looks capitalized. And so, we have a text transform property called uppercase that makes it uppercase. Excellent. Um, cool. And then that whole thing is vertically centered. So I call this um, I'm kind of inclined to call this, instead of a div, a nav, now that I'm working on it. So I'm going to say that um, navs that are in the header I want those to flex. I want them to align items center. Okay, getting there. And then it's offset from the side a teensy, teensy, tiny bit. And so I'm gonna say that that nav is also, um, well, Again, I don't think I actually want that to be margin. So if I use padding on the other one, I should probably use padding on this one too. So we'll say the padding left on this one is 10. Nope, wrong one. And the entire header, there we go. All right, so that's offset from the side a little bit. And one more thing, I got that, I got that kind of transparent overlay. We're really only going to see these if I get a background image on that header. So I'm going to look up blurry background garden image. Perfect. This one, yeah, cool. It's gonna pixelate and shit, but that's fine. So I'll say that this is background URL that. And on my site, oh, where'd it go? Oh, good call. Cool. And then um, background size stretch. Nope. I remember the background size properties. Uh, hundred percent, hundred percent. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, now we can see through that. That's nice. Yeah, nice. Um, I still need to get that thing on the left, this whole area over here to kind of be demarcated. So, what I'm going to do with that, that's the nav. I'm going to set a background. color of this to, it's like kind of dark, it's a little bit darker. So I'm going to do background color is HSLA, I'm going to do a black. Black is um, zero, anything with 0% light is black. And I'm going to give that a very light transparency. 
other way around. Like that. And then I can set its width, the min width, to 300 pixels. All right, and then the um, those offsite navigation links, I want those to have a margin left of 100 pixels. Cool. Oops. Then they do that with each other. Um, all right. You can also do that with the nav. I can say this has padding left of 100 pixels, and it should push both of them over. Yeah. So still like plenty of typography work to do. You could probably take these offsite navigation things and are they using the sans on that? Yeah. Font family, open sans, sans serif. That cleans that up. It needs to be smaller. So we say font size 12 pixels. Okay. And then it's not dark enough. The background isn't dark enough to make those um, white, but that would be another thing to do. And then, like, we're kind of in the ballpark. Oh, uh, one other thing I want to show you guys. Don't, don't use, like, the angle bracket thing when you're trying to do like a navigation arrow, use a glyph library. So use font awesome is kind of the most popular one. It's also it's also the like least distinguished. Um, so we're gonna say font awesome CDN because they actually don't give you this on the site. <laughs> they make you like register and sign up and a bunch of shit like that. This one, I'm going to link here. And it's just an external style sheet. And what we'll do is we look through the icons and we're trying to find uh, a carrot. And. angle right and then it tells us how to use this um, right there we use an I element and then give it the class FAS FA angle right so I say I class close out the I FAS, Font Awesome Solid, that stands for. FA Angle Right. And, uh oh. FA Angle Right. This? Yes. No. Um, fuck, it might be a premium one though. No? It should be. No, regular solid is uh, fine. The thinner one is pro. And the duotone one is pro. <laughs> duotone. Um, that might be an older version of Bootstrap though. They have their own CDN. Shoot. Yeah. All. All right, 
That's a newer version anyway. There we go. So now we get the actual correct icon on that. Because like, you see how that looks different? I'll put them side by side if you're having a hard time seeing it. Like, they're not the same thing. And that's like, well, it's the same thing with X's. If you just use the X character for that, it always looks so janky. So you've seen how much effort it, uh, it took to like get a glyph library in there. So use one. I ran out of time in my project. Two minutes. Oh, yeah. So how is that? Yeah, they visually separate it a little bit. That little hairline right there. How can we do that? Yeah, so we can just put a border on it. Um, you can also, oh, that's like a sub-pixel. Instead of the border, I kind of want to let the background do the work. And so I'm going to say in, in off-site navigation that follows an off-site navigation. This is where you use that plus selector. I want that to have a margin left of one pixel. There you go. And then there's something else kind of hanky about padding on that. So um, also a pro tip, dock your uh, shit to the bottom when you're uh, looking at CSS styles, because otherwise it reduces the browser width and sometimes triggers different style sheets. All right, so I have that, which I do want. Oh, I know. I'm gonna take nav and I'm gonna make it justify content Flex end. There we go. And the first button, I can say that the first nav link header nav nth child two or one. I want the first one to actually have. Um, padding of one rem on top, three rems on the sides. Nope, that didn't work. Oop, it's because it needs to be the anchor. There we go. Cool. Not fucking bad! Awesome. Questions, takeaways. We're trying to figure out how we lay out things with CSS, document flow and flex. Give me some things you're taking away from this. Did we just waste an hour and a half? That sucks. Okay. Give me like, give me, let's start with one. How about there? One takeaway. Flex is fun. Cool. What can we do with it? Indeed, especially, especially vertical centering. Really the only tool we have for that. We kind of uh, fake it out with things like margins, as Kat was pointing out. But that's not really centering. That just happens to be centering based on the current size something is. 
want that to be dynamic, Flexbox is kind of our only tool. What else? Yeah. There's a lot of different ways you could go about doing the same exact design. There's a lot of different options and solutions. Um, and what criteria do you use to decide to use one over the other? We can do it the same way. Or this, uh, get the same effect five different ways. How do we know which one to do? Yes, that is the criteria. Which one is gonna withstand change the best? And so when you're trying to figure out, should this be padding or margin? Uh, should this be a border or should I space it? Think like, okay, well what happens when I add five more buttons, even if you never would? You start asking those questions, you get to the heart of what's durable. Great, thank you, Priscilla. What else? Things we're taking away from that. Is there a difference in the fact that you do a link or that you do a dot? I just found some link on the internet. You have to use the URL helper with the background. So it's called a helper? Um, like the HSO is like the very helper as well? Is that like no, that's, that's a value. I don't really know what the official name for those things is. It's not a function. No. That's something. What else would we take away from this? How about? Let's get CSS resets. What do they do? They take away all the default browser styles. Yeah. No more default browser styles. Cool. I, anytime I don't do it, I regret it like immediately. Yeah. Um, so I pretty much reset every single time. Don't you think it's better to um, use your own photos, right? I feel like not a lot of people do that. So. Um, oh yeah, Be right? and why? What's the problem with just? Well, because they like take down. Yeah, I don't own that server. They can do anything they want with that. Hey, make it a fucking neo-Nazi sign. I, I have no clue what it like could turn it to. Yeah. Um, so you can download it and then host it yourself, which also is a little less rude because every time like we, we, we refresh the page, they're paying for our server bandwidth. Thanks, free pick. Um, yes, actually, and they'll block your IP address. Another thing you might get surprised by someday. <laughs> Okay, hopefully we saw again how easy it is to get typography that doesn't look like shit, to get a glyph library, Just a minute or two. Ran out of time. Okay, we learned about this wild ass trick, negative margins. Exactly, we could just take the margins, or the padding out of the picture we learned how to get rid of underlines and colors on links. Those two things, that's common. Isn't there like a visiting to those lectures while it's like you visited it based on color? Yep, so a lot of times when you visit something, it'll be purple by default. Uh, if you just set the color, it blows through that also, but if you wanted to actually have a visited color that's not purple, um, then you'd do something like, and that's any anchor tag that has been visited before. Learned about text transform. Alpha. alpha channels, yeah. Mwah. That's like, and alpha channels are kind of neat too because um, without doing anything else, this looks like it's on top of this, which looks like it's on top of this. So now we have dimension to this for free. Transparency is a really cool tool for that. Um, Absolutely. Anything that takes a color takes hex, RGB, HSL, HSLA, RGBA, all of them. They're all just color values. Cool. Give me one more takeaway from the last hour and a half. Yeah. Can it change the size of something with a width? Otherwise, it just wants to. 
Yes. Um, lots of things. Calculate how much space something takes up, uh, whether or not to trigger uh, like a re-render, uh, all those things. It's all based off of width, not height. Uh, cool. Any questions before we wrap? All right. See if you can get that, um, that thing in the assessment. See if you can make that happen. Ask for help if you need it. Get cracking, America.